We are talking of the duty of the church in the community. Amen. Now, my dear friends, do not ever forget your obligation by God because you covenant yourself to God that you are going to work for the, those who are not saved. When Christ sent his disciples, he sent them first to Jerusalem, then to Judea, then where to? To utmost of the world. Now, let me give you a little translation to that one. You know what that means? Jerusalem, it is your own home and family. Yes. That's the first one. Yes. Then the, the second one was Judea. Judea. That is a surrounding neighborhood. All of them. And then to the outmost of the world. That is after that. So have priorities. Care for your home. Care for the neighborhood. Care for all the entire world much as possible. If you cannot go, then support financially. Now, let me give you a little story over here. Uh, there was a young, younger pastor, a younger man, who was ambitious, fairly ambitious, and he was also a guy who, who wanted to do something for the Lord and for the community as well. Now, he came to a church. He was placed in the church, and that particular church wasn't kind of active enough, especially in missionary outreach. It was the church which was slow moving in the progression of God's truth. And he wanted to change that. So one Sabbath, that was in the Seventh-day Adventist church, so one Sabbath he stood up in front of of congregation and told the congregation, you know what? I want you to repeat all what I am going to say. Repeat after me as entire congregation. So they agreed. And then the first statement was his. He says, this church is slow moving to the kingdom of God, but alone. And all congregation says, this church is slowly moving to the kingdom of God, but alone. Now, the second statement that he made, he says, this church ought to walk, march into the kingdom of God, but not alone. The whole congregation says, this church is going to, or ought to, walk, or march into the kingdom of God, but not alone. Then the third statement he made, they repeated. The third statement he stated, this church is going to fly into the kingdom of God, but not alone. And then he paused for a moment and was waiting for the congregation to respond. And they did not. Then he had another statement, and he says, but that is going to cost us some money. And then church turned around and said, Pastor, let Ed, this church walk slowly into the kingdom of God alone. <laughs> now, my dear friends, my dear friends, we cannot walk slowly into the kingdom of God. That is not the requirements of God. He does not want neither one of us to be in his kingdom alone. So this church needed to have some boost and they apparently did not gather from the pastor. Now today, in order for us to Fulfill our duties. Let us first understand where we are and who we are. Let's take book of Revelation. If it's possible that you have your Bibles, I would like you to take that and two important verses. Now, it is going to be in chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. However, I'm not going to stick up too much to these two verses. Only I want you to see what they are saying. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Arise 
and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, live out and measure it not, for it is given to the Gentiles. Now, my intention today, my dear friends, regardless of how much interest you have, because they are from Revelation, from the last book of the Bible, and for the last days, I that I am going to enter much theologically. Actually, what I want you to say, accent here, as a building. Did you get me? The accent here is not on the temple as the building or in the, on the church structure. The accent here is on worshipers. As you could see, they that yes, obviously cannot, cannot be on a structure. Why? Because the temple in Jerusalem uh, was destroyed before the revelation was even written. Are you with me? So that is why it cannot be. Now, uh, as you probably know, I'm kind of jumping over because my time is short. As you probably know, the Jewish temple was destroyed 70 AD by the Titus, by Titus. Therefore, the time, the time that this prophecy applies must be 1844. Are you with me? I want you to catch that. The time when this prophecy applies must be not other than 1844. What is 1844? Why I am saying that is 1844? The eyes of the worshippers were specifically directed to the ministry of Jesus as our high priest in heaven. In the true tabernacle, the Lord pitched not man. Now, I, am, I need to prove you that one from the book of Hebrews in chapter, as you know, chapter 9, verses uh, 11 and 12. 9 through 11 and 12. By Christ being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with the hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into heavenly place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now, what actually here is saying, my dear friends, brothers and sisters, is here, which has particular meaning for the last day Christians, for the seven day Adventist church and all around the world. Now, if you want, if you wish, this is actually investigative judgment. And I know that you know what is investigative judgment. Started 1844, and it is going for how many years now? 170 plus years, my dear friends. Now, we are at the close of probation. This world cannot last much longer. Are you with me? Yes. Has to be something happen. What is going to happen? Probation is going to close, and whether we are going to be on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side of God. So depend on our relationship with God. Depend how faithful to Him we are. We are going to be determined, or we are going to determine our destiny. Amen. This might be hard words, but we are going to determine our own destiny. My friends, if ever the time was for the church of God to be ready spiritually, it is now. We cannot lose any more times. Christ is coming and coming soon. All the signs 
in the world, in politics, economy, or whichever way you want it, in the nature, are testifying to us something very specific. I don't have time much to enter into this one, but let me, let me state over here just globally something that is going to kind of not catch your intention, but is going to remind you that you might know how important spirituality of the church is. Uh, in the book of Luke, 17 chapter, I use all the verses which are well known verses, only that I'm going to kind of explore a little, a little bit on, on them. Uh, Luke chapter 17, and I'm going to read from verse 26 to 27. Christ says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of Son of Man. They did it, they drank, they married wives, they were giving in marriages until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, verse 28. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did it, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planned, planted, and they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all again. Now, I'm not using scare tactic over here. Because you cannot be scared. Only you could be warned. And that's my intention. Now, Jesus Christ called these times in which we live. Time of Noah. Interesting. And use the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. I call, I call this time in which we live now time of preparation for the time when it's going to come that nobody is going to buy and sell. Did you hear me? I call that time. Media call these times in which we live the time of famine and disasters. Pope Francis called this time time of war. Something to take. Now, let me give just a sentence or two. Why I call this time, Christ openly stated what is. Why do I call this time, uh, time of preparing the time for when you are not going to be able to buy or to sell? Just in this area, surrounding area, where you are, my dear friends, take a look how building progression is going all around. And just take a, another step and take a look how extensive houses are. In our area, houses are selling, my dear friends, 100,000 plus above the asking price. Now, this cannot go much longer. No, has to, has to burst, and it is going to come the time when nobody is going to be able to buy or sell, my dear friends. That is the time when we live. Now, when you think of the media, what they are talking, I don't know how much you know, but in, uh, uh, in California, at the present time, just the other days, the fire was raging, and they burned hundreds of acres and it was 300,000 houses that have been damaged and more than 100,000 of the houses have been totally destroyed. Billions or millions of dollars is uh, spent there or needs to be spent in order to re re restore. Now, Louisiana, whether you know that or not, Another disaster. That is what is coming all the way through 
from the Florida or from Texas all the way through to Washington, D.C. Now, what's happened there? $50 billion damages on floods. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Our son lives in Ellicott City uh, nearby uh, Washington, D.C. Just recently, that city was flooded and downpour rain and t took all the houses and all the buildings and cars into a swamp. My dear friends, if that is not a sign of Christ coming, I don't know what is going to be. Now, when the uh, Catholic priest was shot in front of the altar there where he was praying in a French church, shortly after that, Pope Francis made a statement. And he says, this is a war. This is a war. Now, what he actually meant and mean with that, I really don't know. But he knows who are the terrorists, and he knows what is going on. Now, my dear friends, my dear friends, I want you to know the time in which we live, and it is not any more time to spare it. We need to be spiritually minded. We need to stick up with Christ. We need to stick up with him in our prayers and pleading and fasting in order to get ready, to get ready for ourselves and for that, whatever is coming. My friends, again, if you want to see the Lord coming and that you are going to be ready, you need to do all these things. Now, what I am actually trying to say, I mean, I don't have time to go anymore in Pope Francis and all this. I'll leave that to you and you just follow the signs of day and you're going, to, you're going to find out. But what I am going to go back, it is our own spirituality. That is what my intention is for today. Our personal readiness for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't mind, take the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, and again, very known verses, verse 25 to 27. Apostle Paul is using very ordinary words and familiar ones to all of us. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wife. Then he makes a statement. How, how, how to love uh, our wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. By the word, washing the church by the word, my dear friends. Washing the church by the word. I cannot emphasize that enough. So study the word of God. All right? Now, that he might present it to himself. What kind of church? A glorious church. Not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. My dear friends, my dearly beloved, if you want to know what is waiting for us, the expression in this particular verse is passage which is loaded. I want to say overloaded with information. In these verse, ever have been of the great importance and effect it is now today. If ever the time was for a church to be holy and without blemish, it is now, my dear friends. If ever the time was for to be more spiritually or spiritual, it is now. Amen. Shall I ask you? Shall I take a liberty? Within yourself, in your inner self, if you scale yourself spiritually from one to ten, don't answer this question. Where would you, that scale come to? Do that. Do that for yourself, my dear friends. 
Why? Because we are the temple of God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we are the worshipers of Revelation 11, 1 and 2. Are you with me? You kind of, uh, you kind of not certain of that one. But I guarantee you, my dear friends, that is biblical. We are the worshippers of Revelation chapter 11, 1 and 2. Thank you so much. Underline that verse, my dear friends, and say to yourself, I belong to this one. Now, he wants you to be holy. He, he wants you to be sanctified. He wants you to be cleansed. He wants you to be without spark or wrinkle. He wants you to be glorious. And the question is only how to do that. Am I right? Yeah. What shall we do? How many patterns we need to do? How many? How often we need to go to 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 Rome to see St. Peter's Basilica or in Holy Land? Huh? Is that the way? No, my dear friends. No, 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 no. How we are going to achieve that? It is only by the grace of God and the influence of the Holy Spirit. But in order to be that day or that done, we need to submit ourselves on a daily basis to God. We need to be close to him. Christ needs to be in us and we need to be in Christ. Then his grace is going to transfer from him on us and we are going to be ready. Amen. Now the question is, can that be spoiled? Can we after all at the end lose of that where we are aiming for? Yes, it is. And there are several things that could spoil that. And I, uh, I need a little more time, so I have to admit. Uh, I, I need to tell you how that could be spoiled. Now, before I go to that, how can it be spoiled? I have three points how that can be spoiled. But let me say to you, first of all, as you know, as you know, again, I'm going to repeat myself. As you know, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the fastest growing church at the present time. All right? We are numbering now more than 19 millions. We are worldwide church organization. Only two are on the world that are called worldwide church organizations. And those are Seventh-day Adventists and the Catholic Church. Those are two worldwide churches. And yet, there is a great difference between these two. We are based on Sola Scriptura, Bible and Bible alone. And they are based on tradition. So there is already difference between us two. Our mission and missionary activities are compatible to any missionary outreach in the world. Our educational system is above all Protestant churches in the world. Our medical expertise, Seventh-day Adventist medical expertise, are still in a leading points. Are you with me now, friends? We are still, we have been first one in transplant the heart in Loma Linda. Uh, maybe some of you don't know, but I was, I, I was living in Arctica at that time, so that is telling you how old I am. So that is my dear friends. Now, yes, we are the prophecies known people like nobody else from Genesis Chapter 3 to 15, you know what that, that verse is? Prophecy of 
Jesus who is going to come. We know the prophecies right from the opening of the Bible, Genesis 3.15, to the Revelation last pages, my dear friend. We know what's going on and what is going to happen. We know even the time in which we live, even as I stated now. We know that. Now, yes, we are those people whom God counts. That are his people. But, again, if we are not in cooperation with the Holy Spirit, and if we are not close to Christ, and if we do not depend on His grace for salvation and our, our outreach program, then we are going to be doomed. We are going to lose. Only daily, on a daily basis, relationship with God is going to give us that grace. Now, how am I going to prove to you that one? You remember it is written in the John chapter 839. You remember, I'm not going to go, I don't have time. Uh, but uh, you, re you remember when Christ was among the Pharisees and Sadducees, Sadducees and the Jewish people have been coming and said, who you are? What you're talking about? You're saying that you're son of God and so Don't you know that we are who? Children of Abraham. Children of Abraham. Now, actually, what I wanted to say, my dear friends, it is, it is there what I am saying to you. What they wanted to say to him, well, we are biblically or theologically informed, and that is our inheritance, and you don't have to tell us much more than what we do know. Actually, what enter into their hearts, it is a pride, my dear friend. Pride. Now, that same pride is a danger for us as well. We are head, not a tail, in every aspect which I, which I stated now. And we are very proud of our inheritance. We are very proud of our biblical knowledge. We are very proud of, of all what is that we are 19 millions and that we are fastest growing church. But if that price comes to our heart and goes over our heads, we are going to be like people of old Israelites. I need to give you at least this verse in the book of Jeremiah, and that is going to be in chapter 6. Book of Jeremiah. Please take and underline this verse if you wish to, that, you, that will be a reminder to you. Um, and it is going to be chapter 6, verse 16. And then I'm going to go into uh, verse, chapter 7. Thus says the Lord, Stand ye in the old ways and see and ask for the old paths where it is good, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, What? We will not. We will not. We will not. God was giving them chance. God was giving them opportunities. And they said, well, God says, go and look. Find out how good I was to you. Find out the old ways. Find out how merciful I was. And he said, go and walk that way again. And they said, we, are, we will not. We will not. So that is the pride. And now, in uh, chapter 7, uh, listen to verse 15. Then God says, I will cast you out of my sight. As I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore pray not thou for these people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear them. 
What a tragedy, my dear friends. What a tragedy. What is actually this? The pride enter into their lives and their heart, and that is, that is what destroyed them. That is what, they lost their privileges. Now, the, 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 the second thing, the second thing would, could stop us to enter into the kingdom of God and to fulfill our commission. You might be surprised. Compromising. Compromising with the world. Compromising with Satan's offer to you as a Christian. Compromising, my dear friends, for a good job working on Sabbath. Compromising, just shortening the hour. Compromising whatever it is. But compromise is going to always cause you and you are always going to lose. Compromise is always on the wrong side, not on the right side. I'll give you a story over here. And I know when you hear today's story, this story, if you did not hear before, you're never going to forget. A story of a Russian hunter. Story of a Russian hunter. Did you ever hear the story of Russian hunter? No, you did not. So I'm glad. A Russian hunter was always wanted, was always ready to kill the bear in order to have a big, shiny bear coat on his back. So he came out, and sure enough, this is an allegory. Uh, how do you call the story which, uh, when the trees and the animals talk to men back? There is a special word for that one, but nevertheless, it is a story, it is allegory. I, I want you to, uh, mental prophosis, that is the, 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 the word. So, and he aimed, sure enough, the bear came out, and he aimed on it and was ready to shoot. And the bear stood up on his two feet, the back, and he said, hey man, Stop! What are you doing? Why you want to shut me? And then he, the hunter says, well, I always wanted to have a bear coat on my back. Oh, and the bear kind of smiled and he said, well, we are in the same position. You want, you want a coat and I only what I need it is a one meal in my tummy. He says, well, there is a cabin, hunter's cabin. Let's go in there and we, we could talk, we could compromise some of the things. Sure, hunter was short-sighted. He went in and shortly after that, bear came out, but they both got what they wanted. <coughs> Are you with me? Yes. They both got what they wanted. The hunter got bear coat on his back. And the bear got warm meal from him. My dear friends, do not ever compromise with the word of God with a Satan's offer. It might cost you that you would not imagine. Temporarily, you might be in gain of position or you might be monetary gaining or whatever it is. But whenever you compromise, it is going to cost you, my dear friends, that you're going to lose eternal life and salvation. Now, I am... Um, another one. I uh, I'm not too sure whether I should go boldly into this one. What is a sign of non-spiritual church? You know, my heart was bleeding when I was going from church to church in Ontario with the position that I had that is irrelevant and so forth. But you know what? why my heart was bleeding? When I come into the church, when we came into the church, I tell myself, going very often 
from Toronto, our place in Toronto, to the London church was the furthest one, or Normanville, or wherever it was, and so forth. And you know what I've seen? That half of the church have been empty. That is a sign, my dear friends, of a low spirituality. Elders, deacons, church board, whether you are on the duty of the Sabbath or not, you need to be on time in the church because that reflects the spirituality of yours. And spiritually, individually, it is going to make us spiritual collective. One thing I learned very early in my ministry, my dear friends, and that is that the spirituality of the church is not here, but it is down there. Are you with me? Spirituality of the church does not depend much on a pulpit as it depends on the pews of the church. So if you want to be spiritual church, you need to be spiritually minded individually. And then collectively, we are going to be spiritual. Amen. Are you with me? That is what needs to be done. Yes, church leaders and elders need to know where the church is at the present time. You need to know. And also you need to know where the church is going to go from this point to further points, and every year to have a plan for the spirituality growth of your church. If you do not do that, then you are going to lack in a spiritual affection. Now, there was a survey which was done. I'm going to cut short over here as well. Survey was done in the, in the uh, churches. And the survey was done with, um, with the, 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 the uh, Seventh-day Adventist churches in a big cities, like a big cities. Like Los Angeles, uh, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and uh, many other ones. I really don't know which to, which to call them. Uh, but now, here is the result. Now, the result of that survey, and that was done recently. I think that was done in Toronto as well. Listen to this. Only 3% says that they are in that particular church uh, by influence of pastor. Only 3% by the influence of pastor. Now, 9% says they chose this church for the architectural beauty. All right, nine percent. Fourteen percent say they that they are of the denominational uh, loyalty to that church and to that doctrine. Eighty percent say they of the convenience because it is very close to they where they live. Twenty-two percent says for the people within the church whom they respect. You see, the percentage is growing. Now, the twenty-four percent says. The friends and the neighbors invited them. You see now what is the duty of the 21st century church? I was very surprised and I'm going to tell you now. Question is, where we are spiritually? Spiritual people care for the spirituality of the other ones. And what mostly surprised me, it is those 3% on account of a pastor. That might not be with you, Pastor, and I hope that was not with me, you know. But listen, from these, from these statistics, we need to learn something. I don't know of a pastor yet that like that he is only loved by 3% of the congregation. I don't know of any pastor that likes to babysit sleeping church. I don't know of any pastor of any denomination that like to pass, pass fire to, to, the, to the congregation and put them in sleep. 
No. That, would, that, that, is not, that is not special in, among the Seventh-day Adventists. But what is saying to us that we need to take closer look to these statistics and that is going to make us and the church to fulfill its duty. My dear friends, I need to come to the close, even though that I have a little more to say, but I'm not going to go into internet. Now, the question, <coughs> last question that I have, how can we achieve our spirituality on a daily basis? And when we achieve the spirituality on a personal basis, then we are going to be ready to enter into the community as well because we are going to reflect the character of Jesus Christ and it is going to shine and reflect on them and then they are going to be hopefully coming to this church to praise the Lord and be ready for the kingdom of God. I do have a little poem over here with what I am going to close. Shop in a heavenly grocery store. When I uh, was in Florida last Sabbath or so, I uh, presented, not this sermon, similar, similar to this one, and then I gave to entire congregation this poem. And the poem is of uh, inspired poem of Lorraine Wood, Woody, you know. And somehow someone sent it by email this particular poem to the other church that we are right now, so I don't know whether to, but nevertheless, here it is. Shop in Heaven's Grocery Store. I was walking down life's highway a long time ago. One day I saw a sign that reads Heaven's Grocery Store. As I got a little closer, the door, the door came open wide, and when I came to myself, I was standing inside. I saw a host of angels. They were standing everywhere. And one angel says, my child, shop with a care. Everything a Christian needs was in that grocery store. And all you couldn't carry today, come back the next day for more. First, I got some patience. Love was in the same room. Further down was understanding. You need that everywhere you go. I got a box or two of a wisdom, a bag or two of faith. I just couldn't, couldn't miss the Holy Ghost, for he was all over the place. I stopped to get some strength and courage to help me run the race. By then, my basket was getting full, but I remember I needed some grace. I didn't forget salvation, for salvation that was free. So I tried to get enough for, of that to save you and me. Then I started to the counter to pay my grocery bill, for I thought I had everything to do my master's will. As I went up the aisle, I saw a prayer and just had to put that in too. For I knew when I stepped outside, I would run right to a sin. Peace and joy were plentiful. They were on the last shelf. Song and praises were hanging near so I just helped myself. Then I said, now how much do I owe? He just smiled again and said, just take them everywhere you go. How much do I really owe? He smiled again and said, my child, Jesus paid your bill a long time ago. By, by, by God's grace, by God's grace and grace alone, my dear friends, we are going to be spiritual church and we are going to be strong spiritually. And we are going to be able to fulfill the mission of our God in the community. May God bless you.